back to ARC Tutorials. This is REST API Top 40 Interview Question and Answer Series. This is the part 2 of the series. Make sure that you have seen and checked out the first part where we covered around 12 questions. Let's get started with this series and part 2. Before we get started with the interview question answers, I'll request you to please get your PDF copy of this e is this of this entire presentation of four parts as an ebook and it's available at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any questions, write to me at surya.arati at gmail.com. Thank you so much in advance. All right, we'll continue with where we left. The first question in this part is, what are some of the principles of REST? Right? We talked that, we talk in, the, in the part one, we talked that any API that follows the principles of REST becomes a RESTful API. So let's learn what are those principles now. Any REST API must follow top five requirements. Okay, any API that fulfills these five uh, requirements is called a REST API. The first and the foremost is the client-server decoupling. The client and the server can only interact in a series of requests and responses. Clients will make a request, server will send response, that's it, deal done. There is no more further communication. Uniform interface, that means all communications between client and server follow the same protocol. And that protocol for REST, we call it HTTP, that is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A uniform interface simplifies integrations because every application will be using the same language to request and send data. Stateless. Any, the server do not store any information of the past request or the responses sent. Each request and response is treated as one single transaction or interaction, okay? which reduces the server load. For one, because it's not saving your old data, history, logs, all that and hence it improves the memory and improves performance. Layered system. Layers are servers that sit between client and API server. Okay, now there can be multiple APIs, right? Uh, which does a lot of functions like identifying spam, improving performance, um, you know, uh, layers are modular. There can be a process layer, there can be an integration layer, there can be a security layer. So there can be multiple layered system. Okay, there is no one transaction which says client should call only one API and that's it. No, there can be multiple layers of APIs and how it got the data passes through. Cacheable. Server responses indicate whether or not the resource is cacheable. Okay, which, which means that clients can cache any resources to improve performance. Any API that follows all these five principles or requirements is becomes a REST API. I hope it's clear. Please take a moment to read all the theory and documentation I've collected. This will really help you get your fundamentals right. Now, uh, the next logical question sometimes they ask is some, state some of the public APIs that you have used or they'll talk, talk about some of the public APIs that you are aware of. So you should be aware of these APIs uh, just for testing purpose or even for just uh, knowledge for, for purpose. So talk about Google Maps API, talk about Weather API, talk about YouTube API, talk about Twitter API. These are all publicly accessible APIs. If you have time, please do check them out. There's, there is a lot more APIs like Instagram API, Facebook API. Uh, there is a JSON um, placeholder fake restful APIs. So there are a lot of APIs available out there which are public and can be used for learning and training purposes. All right, now the next question is what is messaging in the context of REST? In REST, messaging refers to the back and forth communication between the client and the API. Okay, the client will make a request, server will give a response. That so communication between client and server is referred to as messaging system. Okay, An interaction always starts with the client messaging the API with a HTTP request and the API process this request and then sends back a HTTP response with a status 200 or any status failed. Um, four of, uh, four of, uh, so I'll cover about the statuses in the next couple of slides but remember interaction always starts with client making a request. That means you make a Ajax call or HTTP call and server will receive that request, will process it and give back a HTTP response. And that is called messaging in the context of REST APIs. 
share some of the advantages of API testing. Right now, again, this is something that is asked to everybody, developers, QA, full stack developer, DevOps. The reason is APIs are critical infrastructure to any application. Okay, they're extremely critical for reason that one wrong uh, thing in the API can bring down the entire house. Okay, it can lead to a lot of damage. So hence, the advant hence we have to conduct a thorough API testing. API testing is less time consuming than functional testing. API can be performed in early stages of software development. It is cost effective. It is language independent and time effective, right? Most of the responses that we get from API server for APIs are plain uh, JSON text or XML, which can be read by anybody, right? And we can perform an extensive testing without even knowledge of the backend, what's happening, how it's happening. So it's cost effective, long run, it's very beneficial. It will avoid a lot of damage uh, if we do thorough API testing. List some differences between APIs and web services. Now, remember that. Again, this is a tricky question always asked to confuse uh, developers. All web services are APIs, okay? Any web service is an API, but not all APIs are web services because we learned that REST APIs needs to follow certain principles and guidelines. Only when they follow, they become RESTful APIs. Otherwise, they are just APIs and they are called web services. A web service might not contain all the specifications and cannot perform all the tasks that API would perform. A web service can use any style. It can be a REST API, it can be a SOAP, or it can be an XML RPC can be different styles other than REST. A web service always needs a network to operate while APIs can operate over the internet because they are using REST APIs use HTTP protocol, right? So these are some of the differences that you should talk about. Again, I'll say take few minutes or seconds to read these data, understand and get your concepts extremely clear. Now, what is a resource in REST context, okay? In REST, every data at the server is referred to, is labeled as a resource. So when we say we are posting data, that means we are creating a resource. When we say get method, that means we are requesting resources or data, right? Put means we are updating a resource. So a resource is an object with a type and a list of methods that can be used with it, okay? A resource is identified with a uniform resource identifier or URI in short, okay? Clients access resources by including their URIs in HTTP request, right? So there is always a uniform resource identifier, URI, like an ID or something or underscore ID, which uniformly, uniquely identify a resource. There can never be two resources with the same primary ID, okay? It will give you error. So those are the things that you should remember, like talk about person or say give an example of a YouTube video, right? Every YouTube video will have a certain ID, which is what we put it in the URL, yes? And that ID is unique because it will generate its URL. And that is how you can uniquely identify that particular video. So that's a uniform resource identifier. Say tweet ID can be a tweet ID, right? Or it can be in your context, you can talk that there is a person ID which is always unique or think of it in database like a primary key if you can want to correlate. I hope uh, it's clear to you what is a resource. Now what is a URI, right? Let's continue a little bit and I'll talk in detail explaining you. URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier. It Using URI, we identify a resource on a web server. Each resource has its own unique URI, which means we need to include that in the HTTP request. The process of targeting a resource when it's URI is called addressing. The format of, of URI is as follows. You will give HTTP here, colon, service name, let's say googlemaps.com or youtube.com slash resource ID, which is the V, this is a resource type, say video slash ID, the YouTube video ID. So that's the standard format that you would see everywhere. So think of it this way. This is the resource ID. That is nothing but a unique ID for that particular data, 
okay that for that particular resource that's what is called as a URI and definitely not URI a movie okay so yeah okay name the five important principles of an API design now the five important principles of API design are setup execution verification reporting and cleanup okay so these are some of the five steps again uh, very very basic uh, definition uh, open definitions which means it can vary from uh, one framework to other but these are some of the common principles that you will work with like setup execution verification reporting and cleanup if something was success you send the response if something failed you do log you do some cleanup you don't you don't make an entries in any other database or anywhere and then send back a failed status so these are this is what happens setup execution verification reporting and cleanup now what does it mean for api to be stateless now this is a question that even i ask a lot of times uh, when i'm conducting an interview so statelessness is one of the key principles of uh, rest architecture in stateless communication the server does not store any information about previous communications okay in other words the client and server do not know each other's state every request and its corresponding response is a unique interaction and a unique transaction statelessness simplifies client server interactions because the server does not really rely on past request okay so think of it that way there is no history okay of apis you, the client makes a request server will give response that's it nobody remembers anything what happened in the past right or any uh, log of it of course there will be logs captured um, that's different but i'm saying the server or the apis doesn't keep any track of it now which markup languages are primarily used to represent resources in rest api okay so there are two common languages that are okay markup is a wrong uh, word here but you understand it that the two common languages used for representing resources are xml which is extensible markup language and json which is javascript object notation mostly enterprise complex applications still rely on xml because it's proprietary data and they are they want to secure that and they don't want the data to be available easily accessible all that but if you look at the modern architectures uh, of major uh, companies or which are hosted via internet public apis they are all mostly on the json so most likely at least what i have worked in the past a uh, six eight years mostly i've worked with json uh, op so which is javascript object notation so that's something that's used for uh, representing the resources all right that brings us to the end of part two of this series i hope you're enjoying i hope you're learning if you have any queries please drop them in the comment section i'll be more than happy to answer them We'll continue this series in the next part we'll learn about part three and bring learn about more interview questions thank you so much for supporting me till now please keep supporting further as well i'll see you in the next episode take care and thank you